There you are. Welcome to Blackstone, Virginia in a Zen Fit, a new Zen Fit. <laughs> a Zen Fit is, is a turning point, a shift from nothing fits, nothing fits, to everything fits. Same situation. Suddenly, nothing fits, everything fits. That's a Zen Fit. So let's have a Zen Fit today. Now the title of this talk is... Uh, we're all bipolar. We're all bipolar. Um, I have a friend of mine who's bipolar, and, and uh, I've learned so much about it, even though it's been part of my life. I mean, my sister's bipolar, and uh, uh, I'm bipolar. <laughs> well, I've, I've had some bipolar incidents, but let's talk about what, you know, the bipolar as a metaphor. Now, a metaphor is a fact. Bipolar is a fact. It's a medical fact. Go to medical science work, you know, to give you a medication for it. In other words, it's a medical fact. It's a condition. It's a biological condition. It's about the mind not about the body. So a bipolarism is a, um, call it maybe a, not a pathology, but it certainly is a dysfunction that afflicts a lot of people. So that's the fact. But bipolar is also a metaphor. Now a metaphor is a um, Zen fit. There we go. A metaphor is a Zen fit. So, t how would that work with? So, suppose you suppose you are really working with bipolar issues medically. Okay, that's a fact. Now, if bipolarism is a metaphor, and I say we're all bipolar, that transforms your bipolarism from being a negative to being a positive. If everyone's bipolar, you see, then that changes my particular affliction to being one everyone has. And if everyone has it, then where is it? If everyone was, if everything was, this is a simple idea, if everything were the color green, like you had green glasses on, so everything you saw was green, then you didn't know you had the glasses on, you wouldn't see green. You would need one speck of another color in order for green to pop into perspective. If everything is green, you can't see it. You can only see it when there's a contrast. You can only see anything unless there's a contrast. When everything is the same, you can't see it. When everything feels the same, you can't feel it. Now check this out for yourself, but it's very simple. When everything is the same, there's no distinction. And when there's no distinction, there's no form, you see. So we're like this back, like this room here. If you walk into this room, it's a foyer. You know, it's got all my artifacts you have in here, you see. And if you walk into this room for the first time, you're kind of like, <gasps> and then you start selecting things. But in that first moment when you walk in, it's just like oh, the whole room. But then you start looking at, then you start selecting things. And then suddenly, oh, look at this. Here's a puppet of Emmett Kelly, the sad clown of the Barnum and Bailey Circus, the famous sad clown. Oh, oh, and look over here. Here's a, and you could go through the whole room and spend a lot of time here saying, oh, oh, hey, look at this. Here's a cotton ball. Now, when you see the cotton ball, 
Look at this cotton ball. You don't see the rest of the rum. You see the cotton ball. And then you put down the cotton ball and you say, oh, look at this. You got a martini glass with candy. And now the other rest, the background disappears and you're looking at this, you see. But if there is no foreground, there's just the rum, the background. And it's kind of like a, 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 a psychosis. In other words, it's like a, it's like a white out in the snow form, a snowstorm. There's nothing standing out. There's no foreground. There's nothing to look at. It's just oh, everything, you see. It's a state of wonder, if you want, or panic. It's wonder or panic, whichever way you want to fit. But anyway, I'm trying to get to the point is that bipolarism, metaphorically, you see, is our consciousness. The Earth is bipolar, for God's sakes. It's got a North Pole and a South Pole. And it's the Earth is a dynamic unity of opposites, churning out new forms. I was just watching uh, 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 Richard, uh, anyway, anyway, one of planet, uh, the last one of, these, one of these planet stories. And the diversity of life is unbelievable. If you were to see it for the first time, it would be like you were Jake Sully on Pandora. And then you would see what everything looks like. Well, what is this? This is the world of a four-year-old or a two-year-old. Where everything is like, oh, mommy, what is this? What is this? Oh, that, that's a cup. Be careful. <coughs> this is a dog. And you would name everything like Adam and Eve. But before that naming, everything is wonderful. There's no distinction. But it's not until, but, but, so you look at this now. There's a state of wonder of Jake Sully and Avatar, or the two-year-old, which is where we all begin, before anything is named, and he's just curious, he's just eye-wise open. Oh, and he wants to touch everything, taste everything, feel everything, test it out, what is it? You know, and mommy comes along and says, oh, that's good, that's bad, don't touch that, stop touching that. You know, so we, we fall then into the bipolar world. We fall into the bipolar world of good and bad. Oh, this is good. Oh, that's bad. Oh, do that. Oh, don't do that. Oh, you're good today. Oh, you're bad today. That's bipolarism. The duality of good and bad. Up and down. Hard and soft. In and out. Strict and relaxed. Everything is bipolar. Left and right. Conservative and liberal. Democracy and communism. Where can you go that bipolar isn't? And yet we all want peace. We all want unity. We all want to be the same. And yet we don't want to be the same. That's bipolar. I want to be the same. I want to belong. I want to be loved. I want to have security. Be taken care of. I want to be free. I want to be unique. I want to be the most unique, the unique one. I don't want to blend in and be everybody. I don't want to be part of the mob. I don't, we, I don't want to be a clone, a cog. You see, I want to be unique. But at the same time, oh, I want to be long. I want to be security. I want to be loved. I don't want to be isolated. I don't want to be uh, standing outside the family, outside the group, outside the world, cold and shivering in the cold, looking in through the window at the people having a good time in the commercial. I don't want to be outside of the... I want to be like those people in the commercial. Oh, what are they doing? Oh, they're taking x lax Oh, well, well, I'll have some of that. <laughs> you see the bipolarism? The bipolarism. It's two, duality. Everybody's, oh, non-dual, I want to be non-dual. What's non-dual? I'm non-dualist. What the fuck? <laughs> what, what is that? It's an idea of being not two. It's just an idea. You're still two. There's, non, there's non-dual and dualism. That's two. So everything creates two. Everything creates two. Everything is the yin yang. You have you have black, bam, 
Now it's two. Now there's an opposite. And you notice in the yin yang, the black is in the white, the white is in the the white is in the black. So everything has its own opposites. This is non this is bipolarism. Now I speak from experience now, getting down to the fact of it, the fact of bipolarism. Or I could say uh a lazy eye or a walleye. So when I was uh, when I was a little chick kid, when I look to the left, you see my eyes don't focus. When to the left, not to the right, they do. So when I look to the left, this eye right here looks up, and this one looks straight. So, and I thought, and I remember thinking everybody saw double. I didn't think any of it. I didn't think it's anything of it. I thought everybody saw double when they looked to the left. My mother noticed it. <gasps> That eye's not focusing with the other. Took me to the doctor. Yeah, he's got a lazy eye. Wall eye, lazy eye. Some movie stars have it, you know, but you all know when, when somebody's with a lazy eye, you don't know which eye to look at. <laughs> anyway, but the point is that when you have, when your eyes don't focus, they're bipolar. When the eyes don't focus, you could say the eyes are have two poles. When I look to the left right now, there's two of you there. You know, they're one's above the other. You know, so I can choose which one, which one, which one is the real me, that one or that one. You see. When I look to the right, well, there's only one. So this is basically this. You know, so when I look to the left, there's two. When I look to the right, there's one. So I used to wear a prism, and the prism, big old thick glasses, used to force the eyes to focus. And they were really pain in the ass, you know, they, the, the prism, because uh, uh, any, anyway. So I went to get cataracts removed, and the doctor says, oh, we can fix that. <gasps> what? It was an operation to fix bipolar eyes? Yes. So they went in there. What they do is they... Uh, they uh, the, the eyes the the eyes have up or pairs or pairs of muscles that interact with you know bipolar muscles <laughs> so they will weaken one so they work together like like one like in my eye then there's one muscles that pull the eye up so they would shorten it or weaken it to bring it back down so it brought my focus to be, instead of being too right when I looked ahead, like it brought my focus down to being straight ahead. So there's a little window right here, you see, where I'm only seeing one me or one you. But turn my head, oh, there's two. <laughs> oh, there's two. Oh, oh, there's one, you see. So this is a metaphor. This is a working metaphor. All metaphors are working. You work with them. To find out what transcends bipolarism, what transcends the duality of the mind, of the duality of consciousness, which, like on Noah's Ark, everything comes in pairs of opposites. Everything comes in consciousness, everything comes in pairs of opposites. And these pairs of opposites dynamically create a dynamic unity. But the problem with consciousness, particularly the American consciousness, we can only focus on one thing. So if I say here, what's the one? They would say, oh, well, it's the black is the one or the white is the one. So if I'm a racist, I would say the white is the one and the black's not the one. <laughs> but you see here, this is the yin-yang that is ambiguous. This is the real yin-yang. You got the witch, the hag. You see the, uh, the her, her big nose, her mouth, her eye. Well, you got the princess. You got her little eyelid, her little right cheek, a necklace. Princess and hag. Which is it, the hag or the princess? Well, whichever one you say, you're wrong because you leave out the twin. You leave out the yang. If you say the yin, you leave out the yang. Say the yang, you leave out the yin. So this is true bipolarism, which is ambiguity. For instance, 
looking through my bipolar eye, my 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 uh, lazy eye or wild eye, whichever you want, you see, I see two worlds out there. I see two two me's. Both of them look the same, but they're different. Of course, in my vision, they're stacked like that. So I see two like that. So I got to choose between which one. If I want to, if I'm going to reach out and get the cotton ball, I have to choose <laughs> which eye to use. Otherwise, I'll keep missing it. You know, you know, close one eye and try to put your fingers together. Right? That's fun. When you have two eyes working together, you can put your fingers together. You have depth. You see one. But with the bipolar eye. You see two, you don't know which is the one. So is the finger, does the finger go here or there? And you, you're looking for the one. This is our whole life is trying to put our fingers together. We see two, left, right, conflict, civil war, good versus bad. I'm good, you're bad. And they say, no, I'm good, you're bad. Wow, 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 wow. I'm right, you're wrong. No, I'm right, you're wrong. Wow, 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 bipolar. What's the one? That is two. You see? Where is home? Coming and going, we never leave home. We never leave the one. What is the one when everything is two? And then we take sides. No, my yin is the truth. No, one. the yin is feminine. I know women rise up on top. No, men, men, men. Back forth, the teeter-totter. American mind is stuck in the bipolar mind and we can't get out. We try to get out by getting rid of the other. I'm going to be a princess if I can erase the hag. So I'm going to erase the hag. But then I erase the princess. <laughs> In other words, uh, you get the sense here, this metaphorical use of bipolar. So we're all bipolar. So how do you get out? Do you get an operation? Do you wear, do you wear prisms? Do you get an operation on the mind? Uh, we're speaking you know, metaphorically here. Well, how do I get out of bipolar? All right, so here's, I see two. But I, I just, I see, I don't, when I look to you, when I see you here, I'm only seeing one because I, I don't, I relax the other eye, so I don't even see what the other eye is seeing. Unless I make an effort to, unless I make an effort then there's two me's here, two you's, two screens. But now I just relax the what the lazy eye and I just see through the left eye. So now my left eye has become the one eye. Now in Zen, what is this one eye that sees beyond the two? Well in yoga it's called the third eye. It's called the, third, the, the chakra between the, the third eye. A lot of pictures you see a, a yogi or with a big eye right there, right? What is the, you know, so what is this be? What is this eye that opens that sees beyond or transcends the two? Well, in Zen it's called prashna. Prashna. Paramita, the par Prajna Paramita Heart Sutra, or the way of seeing that arouses the mind that does not rest on two, that does not rest on good or bad, up or down, in or out, right or left, liberal or conservative, male or female. What is the one eye that doesn't rest on the two? Well, you have to awaken it. You have to arouse it. You have to stimulate it. You have to poke it. It's there. You just have to wake it up. And when it wakes up, it's, oh, the world is wonderfully one again. Oh, this is Pandora. Where can I go that that wonder is not? Where can I go that the one is not? And so Buddha said, says it metaphorically, Throughout heaven and earth, I alone am the honored one. Now he's not saying Buddha is the one, that's two. Buddha and you. The one that is beyond two is you. <laughs> you are the one. If when you awaken yourself as the honored one, as the one. This is a shift 
from looking at the world as two to being the world. When you are the world that you see, it's not two, there's one. Where can you go that you're not? This is a shift in the way we see. The world stays the same. When it doesn't, when nothing fits, it's bipolar. And we're trying to jam everything together, you see? Trying to make it fit, fit, damn it, fit. <laughs> but suddenly when the when there is a shift, when Zen fit when 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 the fit goes from having a fit to fitting, it fits when everything is one. Like when you get, get a picture puzzle done. Suddenly you see the whole picture. <gasps> oh it's a donkey. Or it's one of these complex oh, you know, and you can really, you know, then you, you know, well, I know what the ending is. It's like you're watching a mystery, and when you know who did it, you might want to, oh, I'm bored now, I know who did it. Don't tell me who did it, you see. Anyway, we're all bipolar. Find the one. Find the eye that sees both as one. Find the eye that sees both as one. Find the eye that sees both as one as one and that's beyond choice the eye that sees both at one doesn't choose has no preference has no preference and so the monk asked Joshu master well, what's behind choice everything is choice and Joshu said I alone am the honored one. And the monk said, well, that's a choice. And Jasu called me a dummy. Where is choice? Where is choice? You know, if you are the one, and wherever you go, you are. If you are the knowing of the world, the knowing of the world, wherever you go, you know where you are. You know what the world is. The knowing is the one. If you are the knowing, there is no choice because everything is one. But at the same time, you have a choice. You go to the ice cream store and I want some chocolate. So there is this, there's this transcendence of bipolarism and there is being in bipolarism. That's between, between consciousness is bipolar. Awareness or knowing is non-dual or not bipolar. But that bipolar, that non-duality, is not in opposition to duality. It transcends it. It transcends it. Thanks for dropping in. <laughs> did I really, did I give you a Zen fit? <laughs>